21 million cubic meters. We have about 4 million sources, the waste bins in Austria, and we have hundreds of sinks, different treatment ways. So waste management I wanted to show now is not a problem of masses. It's a problem of volumes. So, and it's a kind of problem of entropy. Uh, I would like to start with a second preliminary remark. Um, how valuable is waste? If we look at the turnover of one kilogram of material, one kilogram of gold is more than 30,000 euros per kilogram. Mobile phones, 4,000 euro per kilogram. Consumer electronic, electronics, 50 euro per kilogram. Food, approximately 10 euro per kilogram. Energy fuels, about one euro per kilogram. Waste, hazardous waste is also about one euro per kilogram. And plastic waste, that municipal solid waste, it's worth about 10 cents, 0 0.1 euro per kilograms. So uh, the material value is very low. So the logistics is very important for the waste business. We need large quantities. This means many people, a lot of companies, big industry to get relevant volumes to do this business. So what's my plan for the next hour? First, I would like uh, to give some uh, introduction into waste and logistics. Then uh, I want to turn to elements of waste collection, basics of waste uh, logistics. I want to look at uh, uh, waste flows, then collection and recycling schemes, uh, some uh, special um, things about plastic waste collection, and at the end, innovative developments that are going on now. Something I will tell you, um, yeah, first, first chapter is about, it, it's, it's an introduction. Um, some information I will give you to you seem to be trivial, but believe me, uh, the things I'm telling you are not trivial. They are, maybe they are on the point. Uh, the first question, a very fundamental question is, what is waste? Um, this is a pile of waste. Maybe, in fact, it is a very famous and valuable art in a museum. So waste is a very subjective property. A thing may be waste for one person, but very useful as a product for another person. Um, it's clear there must be a legal definition of waste. The European Union say, says waste means any substance or object which the holder discards or intends or is required to discard. So we have the so-called subjective property. I want to get rid of it. And we have the objective property some authority defines that something is waste. And then we have special rules and duties. And much of uh, these rules and duties are much stricter than in the product world. And one of the very complicated, most complicated questions is a very simple question. It's a question to answer if a special thing is waste or product. Um, our raw material for treatment in waste management is mostly undefined. Waste is normally mixed material. If it even, even if it is collected separately, we have impurities, we have contaminants, we have misthrows. This is not the exception, it is the rule. And some of our biggest problems are the problems of waste characterization, the changing qualities, the sampling, and uh, many questions about quality. We are very often dealing with unknown mixtures that are changing. Um, we have very 
very many different types of waste, different origin, different physical and chemical properties, different types of waste need different logistics in collection, in transport and storage. Uh, Professor Goldman from Klausdahl, he made a new classification about waste. It's not the classical legal one and he is talking about post-production waste, he's talking about post-industrial waste, post-consumer waste and old uh, waste deposits. Uh, the waste is normally legally classified in Europe by the Euro European waste, cap uh, waste Code and one very, um, very important question which influences the logistics is who is the owner of the waste? Because he is responsible. And the responsibility uh, in the European Union, the producer responsibility is a basic requirement for the waste framework directive and especially with the packaging uh, the uh, packaging uh, materials and packaging waste, the producer must fulfill collection and recycling rates. So it's very important who is the owner of waste and who is responsible. Um, in everybody here knows the laws of thermodynamics. Not so famous are the four basic laws of waste management. Um, they are mine, so they are not so famous, but they seem to be very trivial, but uh, they are really, really important. First, every product turns to waste. It's just a question of time. If you go to a, to a, to a shop, take something to eat, it just, just needs some seconds to turn a product to waste. Uh, but if you are building a house, it will maybe last, uh, 100 years. The second law is what can be in the waste will be in the waste. I will tell you a short story. I was running a, a, the biggest sorting plant of Austria some years ago and uh, it was uh, about 40,000 tons per year and uh, it, is, it was for just separate, separate collected plastic waste. Separate collected plastic waste. But one time in the year, we had a dead, dead uh, deer in our material or a half of a car or big stones up to 50 centimeters. It should not be there, but it is. It's just a question of time. And one time we had a dead murdered person in our plastic waste. It was quite, yeah, a big problem. Uh, the third uh, law is waste goes the way of the cheapest money, hopefully according to the regulation. And if the, there is no regulation in a state or a, 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 a no good administration, um, the, the, the cheapest way to get rid of a waste may be the river, the forest or our oceans. You can see this in some countries. And the last law is waste market is made by regulations. Um, I will come back to this uh, some seconds later. These laws seem to be sim simple, but believe me, uh, they show um, the foundations of waste business. Um, in waste management, the markets are made by regulation. So let me show it in the following chart. On the X axis, we have uh, the costs uh, of waste management for collecting treatment and so on. And on the uh, epsilon axis, we have the technology level or the environmental benefit of the environmental level. At the beginning, if there's no regulation, waste is just dumped, dumped somewhere, um, like it is now done in low developed countries. Uh, then the first problems occur, the, landfill, the first landfill regu regulation leads to constructed landfills. The next steps uh, in industrial countries is a kind of landfill ban. Uh, the landfill ban uh, 
land filling is forbidden because it's not sustainable. And this was done in the Scandinavian countries, uh, in the middle Europe countries. Uh, so uh, the landfill was uh, substituted by incineration plants uh, with energy recovery. And uh, binding recycling rates are the next logic step. They're like the European Union has implemented the circular economy package. And each not new step leads to more an event environmental benefit at a higher technology level, but also to higher costs. Um, waste economics has some specialities. First, um, and this has big influence on the waste logistics. First, there is not one waste market. Uh, you know, the, the, the market of the waste wood and the waste paper and the waste, the, the alternative fuels and the municipal solid waste and even the hazardous waste are different markets with different uh, requirements. Some markets are regional, some are global. If you look at construction and devil, the, uh, the demolition waste, uh, the market radius is, it's a, it's a regional market, just let's say 20, 30 kilometers. Uh, if you look at hazardous waste, it's international. Uh, you can go thousands of kilometers with this material to get, uh, to, to bring it to some specialized recycler. Who is the customer? Who is the client? This is a so-called waste paradoxon. It's even, it's often not clear who is customer and he is who is client. It, it, that depends on the market things. Sometimes you're, uh, you're selling your paper with a good price. Sometimes you have to pay for it. So this is changing. Um, the influence of, onto the quality you are collecting is quite low. We have about 20% of people, citizens, that don't care. They put in the bin what they like, not what they should. And we have to deal with these impurities. We have really no real influence on the waste volumes because if you are buying a product, it will become waste. It's not the responsibility of the waste management sector. Uh, business is regulation driven, I told you before. And the biggest competitor, you know, we have a private sector, we have a communal sector, but the biggest competitor in the market is administration. The private sector can only do that what the, the administration allows by the rules. And usually, and that's uh, many people don't like this, but usually raw material value cannot finance the waste management system. So if we do more environmental better solutions, normally they cost more money. So um, let's go back to the question, who is the, who is the customer? Now the customer in the most cases, it's not the people, not the citizen. The citizens use the service, but the customer, customer is normally uh, the municipality or the region. And um, uh, we have um, uh, companies that are doing the work, the waste companies, they are treating and collecting the secondary waste streams. They may be private or communal. communal. Customer is sometimes it's the, the, the companies, the small companies, the industry, the waste systems. I will talk about this later on, but also government and administration. Normally, it's not the citizen. He's producing, but he's not the customer. Um, stable, we need, we need stable waste management systems. Um, and stable waste management systems um, are systems in balance. It's the balance between waste quantity, on the other hand, the treatment capacities and the economic requirements, let's say the accepted costs. And if this system is not in balance, then we can see crisis. And this means waste, for example, is not collected, it's lying everywhere. So, um, and the main influence from my side has 
the acceptance of the society. Um, yeah, I want to define our topic. Now I want to define our topic. What is waste? What is waste logistics? Waste logistics is the targeted planning and the implementation of all physical and informational processes necessary for the disposal. It deals with collection, transport, handling, and storage of waste. Uh, that's a small picture showing the parts of waste logistics. We have on the one hand, the customer, he's the waste producer, the material, the input material is collected. That's the part of the collection logistics. Within our treatment plants, we have a kind of production logistics, like in every treatment plant, we have the storage logistics and we have the supply logistics. It's the, sometimes it's a, a long distance transporting uh, to landfills, incineration plants, recycling plants. These are the parts of waste logistics. Now I'm coming to the elements of um, uh, waste collection systems. Uh, the basis of recycling is separate collection. Our children learn to sort waste in the kindergarten and the elementary school and this has a very long-term and lasting effect. Um, there has been a separate collection in Austria since the 1970s. Uh, but why did it start? It did not start because of the raw materials and recycling. The reason was the lack of landfill well volume, uh, of not, not, not the interest in the, in the raw materials. And um, today we are combining separate collection, especially with, with colored bins. And for Austria and Germany, we can say waste separation has become part of the culture. Separate collection is very uh, important for the following treatment, especially for recycling, because the citizen, uh, from, a, from a technical point, he's the first kind of sensor-based sorting machine, because every particle is in his hand and he decides where to give it. He's the first sorting machine. Um, he or she defines the quality and the quantity. Separate collection everywhere? Mm, no. Some months ago, before Corona, I was in a European capital. It looked like this, just around my hotel. Could be better, better collecting. I don't say which capital it was. We would be very uh, upset about it. Um, yeah, and yeah. Uh, what about developing and emerging countries? No, sometimes no really trace of uh, separate collection. Maybe there is a, normally there's an informal sector. So people are collecting a, a, a valuable waste, for example, the metals. Um, but there are people in the landfills who pick up out and pick out what uh, could be used and can earn a living from this. Um, separate collections, something new. Let's have a, a look a little further back, more than 100 years. This is a book uh, of uh, an engineer and of the empire of Austria. You know, Austria was sometimes a little bit bigger than, the, than now. Uh, he lived in Budapest and he wrote a book with the title Electricity from Waste, which was published 1911. Etienne de Fodor, his name, he describes in detail the separate collection through multi-bin systems, sorting systems, and also the energetic use of waste to produce electricity. And then we forgot about it for about 60 years until the 70s. Uh, one more word to history. Here are some more historic pictures. The oldest picture I found showing waste collection showed the first picture on the left, Hamburg, 1609. Um, and the other two 
pictures show the waste collection beginning of the 20th century, typical sheet metal containers and uh, the collecting trucks were looking a little bit, little bit different than now. Um, we have, there are four principal cases of waste collection. The first, the tour. It's a collecting truck emptying the bins or containers into this truck. Second, the direct collection, mainly with commercial waste. A container truck brings an empty container and picks up the full container. Then uh, if the tra treatment plant is too far away, the collecting trucks just bring it the waste to a transfer station from here, long distance vehicles bring it to the treatment plants like landfills, incineration plants or paper mills. And we have the possibility uh, of subcontractors. So the waste contract belongs to a waste company, but the transport is made by a subcontractor directly from the industry to the treatment plant. Um, the waste collection system has three elements. The first element is the type of the containers. The second element is the type of the trucks. And the third element is the organization, which means frequency of collection, collecting where, uh, collecting place, the fee system, and so on. And for every collection system, we have the right containers. Uh, here is just uh, uh, some possibilities. Uh, on the one hand, we have the empty out system container, uh, which are uh, filled into the trucks. Uh, then we have the containers for uh, the containers for change system. Uh, also some possibilities and at the end we have the single use system containers for example for infectious uh, waste in in hospitals and each type of waste and each volume finds its right container used materials are mainly polyethylene and steel we have also a, a variety of uh, uh, a variety of trucks um, uh, I will introduce the most used vehicles later on. Now to the basic collection systems. Uh, the collection without system, um, it's the easiest one. Uh, the waste is lying at the curbside, there's no container, and it was used some years ago uh, for bulky waste in Austria too. The single use system, with bags used for collecting waste and at events, for example, or in rural, rural areas or for plastic packaging. Here you get defined number of, number of bags. If you need more, then you have to pay a special fee. The third system is the empty out system. Um, it's the most, most used uh, system for the municipal waste, but also with small volumes of commercial waste. And then we have the change system commercial and industrial waste, but also construction waste is mainly collected in containers with a change system. The collecting waste company brings the empty container and takes the full one with the truck. Um, we can also, uh, if we organize collection systems by location, then we can des describe on the one hand a pickup system. The waste is collected at the house or from the curbside. You just have to position your bin at the collecting day and we have to bring systems like collecting islands. Uh, here the citizen has to go to a pub public collecting place where different types of municipal waste is captured. Um, very good infrastructure, the recycling yards. Um, it's also a bring system. It's also a bring system, but you have to go to this recycling yard it's a central collection point, uh, waste material collection centers, the collection of additional waste, green waste, bulky waste, uh, electronic waste, metals can be done here. And partly also commercial waste can be delivered. In Upper Austria province in Austria, uh, uh, the recycling yards uh, uh, are collecting about 80 types of waste separately collected there. 
And if you have enough volume, if you have a defined quality, you can get quite good prices for this. We have um, two types of vehicles in collection. But we have two, two types of vehicles, not in collection. We have on the one hand uh, the collection trucks. Um, they have three main elements. On the one hand, the chassis, then the body, and the loading equipment. And they serve to collect the waste directly from the waste producer. They are not transporting. For transporting, they are for collecting. So if you have to go a longer distance, uh, normally you take a, a transfer station and go with a long distance truck to the treatment facility. Uh, the long distance trucks um, from transfer stations or from the output from uh, log logistic centers of the waste management companies, uh, they are going a long, a long distance to, for example, incineration plants or cement plants or paper mills or something else. Um, yeah. First, we'll, we'll look at the collection trucks. Uh, we have three main types um, that, that, um, uh, that differ in the different ch uh, charging devices. And we have on the one hand the back loader, uh, second the side loader, it's filled from the side, and the front loader, which is over the front. Uh, just look at these uh, cars or these vehicles. The, the, the most uh, mostly used is the back loader with the plate press. Uh, it's not necessary to describe it in many words. I will show you a short video. Uh, it's animated and then you will understand how it works. I hope it works. Lawrence, could you tell me if it works? Just look at it. Yeah. I don't see it at the moment. It's still your presentation. You see Do you no. see it? No, why don't you see it? That's very bad. Because you're sharing your presentation and now it's probably opening in your, uh, in your Explorer. What can I do? Just a moment. I will try to do just a moment. Uh -huh. I don't know how to, how to bring it to work. Dort wo Bildschirm freigeben steht, kannst du auswählen, welche, welches Bildschirm freigeben. Ist das neue Freigabe oder was? Möglicherweise unten bei dem grünen Symbol. Bildschirm freigeben. Just a moment. Hmm. Just a moment. Das ist die aktuelle Bildschirmteilung stoppen und dann noch einmal neu teilen und dann den, den Explorer zeigen. Ja. Neue Freigabe. Neue Freigabe. Ah, ah. This must be this. Teilen. Do you see it? Yes. Do you see it? Yes. yes. Yeah. So. Here is a backloader. Can see here. Normally, you need uh, two persons working uh, at the back and one driver. So it's filled into the press. And here we have the press. It's compacting it, even uh, making it smaller. Just a moment. Here's now the, un uh, the unloading uh, with a hydraulic, which puts out the stored material. So that's it. Just a moment. I will go back to my presentation. So. That's it. Uh, the second one is the rotary load loader. The rotary loader, um, you can see it in the big cities with normally with, um, with incineration plants. It's a vehicle with a rotating drum and the constant turning of the uh, around uh, results in a kind of mixing and shreddering and the kind of compression. 
but this also has a negative input on the or the net negative uh, effect on the uh, on the quality. Uh, and when emptying, uh, the loading device is hydraulically pushed up, and the drum rotates in the opposite direction, and everything is going outside. This system is not very good for recycling because it's mixing everything and if there are impurities you have it everywhere so it's not good for the quality uh, the last uh, last uh, the, uh, the next uh, kind of truck is the side loader uh, the side loader loads from the side and it's a one person collection truck and the driver works with a with a joystick i will also try to uh, to show it to you, just a moment. No, that's not. See it here. Just a moment. You can see. Die Seitenlader vom Saubermacher sind schnell kost. We can see a side loader. So we have just one driver. He's sitting on the on the on the other side. So he's sitting right. And uh, this system. Uh, the containers must stand in the right position and uh, this system is not possible in the bigger cities it's more for rural locations and small and small cities so let's go back let's go back here um, the front loader, it's um, not very, you can not very often see it in Austria, but in other countries, it's more, it's not, it needs more place and it's usually used for commercial waste and uh, is able to load containers up to some cubic meters and it's more in the commercial waste system. Um, not a standard till now are the electric waste collection trucks. But uh, stop and go traffic is generally well suited for hybrid and electric trucks. And the first trucks are working in some countries and I'm convinced that the number will increase. Um, so to stop this, I want to show you a kind of collection video, which is quite interesting. I will show it to you. It's a, uh, it shows that, um, so just a moment, this does not work now. Why does it not work? Just a moment. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, it doesn't work now. So I, I will show it later on maybe. Um, Um, if we are, we are now coming to the, to the uh, long distance transport, if we, we have two, two uh, systems, two types, the one uh, is the walking floor truck. He has a moving floor, which is hydraulically driven um, um, conveyance system for moving bulk system and the moving floor is divided into three sets of narrow floor slats and every third slat is connected together. And so uh, it's hydraulically powered uh, to move forward and back. And when all three sets are moving together, the load is moved uh, upon them in the direction the operator wishes. These trucks are loaded, have a, have a volume up to 100 cubic meters. The conventional, the conventional system is the hook lift truck. It takes up the containers with a hook and with a truck trailer, it contains up to 60 uh, or 70 cubic meters. Um, one, if, if we want to combine road and train, um, the ACTS system is very useful. It's a Netherlands system and it's widely used by waste companies. Um, it consists of three elements. On the one hand, uh, a train wagon for three containers then an ACTS container, which is adapted, a kind of adapted hook lift container and a hook lift truck. 
And here we can see uh, the truck brings the container from the side and pushes him onto the wagon. Then the turn style is turned and locked. And then the train with the waste containers is directly going, for example, to the incineration plant and unloading, uh, unloading is the other way around or with special container upland uploading cranes. Now I want to go to basics, um, basics of waste logistics. Um, you know, recycling is not done in the traditional waste management companies. Um, they are collecting uh, different waste streams and preparing for treatment, so the pre-treatment. The mechanical pretreatment is a part of the traditional waste management tool, like sorting, splitting, MBTs, the mechanical biological treatment plants. And the traditional waste management companies also run landfills and treatment plants for hazardous waste. But recycling by the means of substitution of primary raw materials uh, is not made in waste management companies. This is made in the industry with the demand of raw materials. And waste management, the waste management produces concentrates for recycling in industry. And the collection is the basis for all that treatment. Um, waste management is a quite um, complex system. On the one hand, we have the value chain, um, the collecting, the sorting and pretreatment, the treatment, the disposal, disposal, and uh, the recycling and products. On the other hand, we have different types of waste to, from different origin. And logistics is, on the one hand, uh, the specialized, uh, um, specialized collecting and transporting and the connecting of each step. Let's say it's, the, it's also the arrows between every element. If we look at the value chain of a waste company, a typical waste company, um, there's from, from, the, from the view of a waste company, we have services like container management, cleaning, analytics, consulting. We have the classical collection logistics. We have the sorting and pretreatment and storage in uh, a treatment plant of their own or in partner partners partner treatment plant and we have the output logistics which is mainly long distance logistics and we have um, at the end the disposal or recovery in plants of their own or of partners landfills incineration co-incineration recycling plants specialized for different secondary raw materials um, a very simple question is, but the main question is who, uh, who is responsible for the waste? Um, if you look at the value chain, a very simple value chain, producer, trade, consumer, and waste collector, um, they have four, four possibilities. The first possibility, and it's the, the oldest one, let's say, is that the waste collector, mainly the municipality, is organizing and responsible. The municipality takes the money from the citizen by tax or fee. So it's just waste management is just, just a question between the, the waste producer, the citizen, and the municipality. Um, the second possibility is that the consumer is responsible. Um, you are obliged to give back your, for example, electric waste or some other waste at defined places. You have to do this and you have to pay for this. This is also a kind of possibility. The third possibility is the deposit system. This means uh, a deposit, for example, for plastic bottles is an artificial value. Normally it's not worth anything, but you, somebody is giving it a, an artificial value and you pay it with your purchase, including the deposit, and you get back this money if you return the waste. It really works very efficient. It's just a question of the amount. Uh, today we have big discussions about implementing a deposit system in Austria for single-use plastic bottles. This is a really high political question, but we have some countries in, in, in Europe, we are doing this 
since years. The last uh, uh, system or possibility is um, the producer responsibility. The producer or distributor has the duty to fulfill collection and recycling quotas set by the law. And they are responsible for the whole life cycle of their products. The producer responsibility is one of the main principles of the European waste le legislation. And we will come back to this chapter, uh, uh, to this in the chapter of the recycling schemes. Um, we have various uh, options for collection systems. There are more central, the more, the more central the, regist the, registra the registration system, the simpler and cheaper it is, but the per performance is limited. Uh, exa just an example, if you have a recycling part, you can set up more and more containers, but you will not collect more materials. So the collected waste is limited. Um, in order to achieve higher collection volume, you have to use a system that is closer to the system, to the to the to the to the to the citizen, to the people. Um, for example, a delivery system with collecting islands, but the performance is also limited. Uh, and then, in order to collect even higher quantities, you have to go straight to the households. For example, the collection system with containers or bags directly. Uh, uh, directly at the, at the homes. And um, increasing collection volumes means getting closer and closer to the citizen with the disadvantage that the collection is becoming more and more expensive. Um, now I'm uh, coming to my fourth chapter. It's about waste flows. The waste logistics is about waste flows. And there's a very good, uh, good software we can use. It's a freeware developed by my colleagues from the Technical University of Vienna. It's called STAN and it's very practical and useful to describe material and substance flows in waste management systems. Um, first, I want to ask a question, how far can we go or take materials or waste? Um, this is an economic question. If you look, I give you a, 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 an example, look at uh, Croatia, Zagreb. Um, if we are collecting waste and we are collecting co uh, 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 demolition waste, um, which has uh, a price of 20 euro per ton, you can approximately go 20 kilometers. Outside this, you make no money. If we look at mixed waste, which has, which has about 100 euro per ton, tons, you can go, you can collect about in a, re, in a region of 70 kilometers. And uh, if you are collecting hazardous waste with about 200 euro per ton, you can even go to other countries or other states. If we look at the output, you know, from the collected material to, uh, uh, to, to, to treatment plants. Um, it's even the same with the commercial way, uh, with the, with the uh, CNP waste. Uh, it's, uh, if we have mixed waste, it's about 200 kilometers um, to the, to which, you, which you can go with your material. And with hazardous waste, you can even go 500 or 1,000 kilometers because it's very high price. This we call the market radius. And outside this radius will not be able to be economically. Um, now I want to show you the modern uh, European waste management treatment system. This system is able to fulfill the high recycling targets of the circular economy package. It's widely implemented in middle Europe, Benelux, Scandinavian member states, some other countries. And let's look at the system from a more technical view. Uh, how does it like, look like? It's about municipal solid waste, and we have uh, the waste from households. Um, on the one hand, uh, we have the separate collection for different materials, different waste streams, different recyclables. On the other, on the one hand, directly going to industry, or the, on, the, on the other hand, the, via via sorting plants. Um, one big uh, volume is the bio waste, bio waste which is going 
uh, to uh, uh, composting or uh, biological treatment plants. Uh, most of the mixed municipal solid waste is directly going to great incinerators, state of the art with treatment of ashes and residues have to go to the landfill. Alternative is to the incin classical incineration, we have the MBT system, the mechanical biological system, which combines the mechanical and biological treatment with co-combustion in the industrial waste to energy plants like uh, fluidicide bed incineration plants in paper mills or cement plants. And the landfills always is our last sink. Now we want to improve the system to reach the high European recycling targets. You know, there's targets from, from, uh, from uh, circular economy package. So what can we do? First, we can improve the separate collection. Here we have very big differences between the regions. I'm looking at Austria. Um, the mixed municipal waste on average is about 130 kilograms per capita a year, but it varies very much. For example, in the, re in the west region of Paradelberg, we have just 80 kilograms, in Syria, 130, and in Vienna, big city, 300 kilograms per capita a year. This shows the potential of separate collection. Um, and from my point, um, especially the bio waste collection has to be improved. The second thing is um, uh, the existing mechanical and mechanical biological treatment plants can be upgraded by new technologies like sensor-based sorting and so on. And from technical point, we are uh, able to bring out more recyclables than we do now. And even in, in, in alternative fuels, so-called uh, RDF, production, we can remove some recyclables. Third, we can, uh, uh, yeah, that's not relevant for us now. Uh, existing uh, sorting plants must be optimized in quantity and quality. And we, maybe we need new solutions for impure fractions of plastic and paper. So feedstock recycling, uh, chemical recycling could be one of the future solutions. But um, there is a very uncomfortable truth. Uh, waste management will not be cheaper in future. It's more work, more expense to reach these targets. Um, but let me tell you some words about plastic recycling flows. I would like to show the situation in Austria. If we look at the waste flows of mixed municipal waste, including packaging waste, uh, here we have the most plastic included in these streams. And the main stream you can see, uh, uh, the main stream is directly going uh, to the municipal solid waste incineration, great incinerators, um, or uh, indirectly, uh, indirectly going via uh, MPT uh, to uh, cement plants and uh, co-incineration plants. And if we look at the whole system, just 4%, just 4% uh, are, are recycled as plastics and 3% as metals. So 7% of recycling rate in the system is not very much. Uh, although we know from sorting analysis that we have relevant amount of recyclables in the gray bin and uh, uh, also plastics. Let's look at the plastics. It's the same, but just in another uh, kind of uh, picture. Um, uh, I want to now, now look especially at the, uh, the potential of polyolefins. So not all plastic, but the polyolefins because it's quite good for recycling. Um, uh, here you can see the mixed waste streams of Austria from the, from the municipality, from the commercial and from industry. So it's uh, polyolefins are about 400,000 tons in our, our waste. And uh, most of the plastic in municipal and commercial waste is polyolefin, but we are just recycling 60,000 tons of polyolefins. This is just 15% of the polyolefin content. So 87% are now uh, incinerated for energy. And um, um, I think this shows that we have to do something and we need solutions for impure fractions. 
and maybe uh, it will be necessary for impure fractions to think about chemical recycling too. Um, now I want to like, or I would like to uh, look at international waste flows. So um, but to give you an example of international waste flows based on um, long distance logistics, it's about incineration in Europe, in Middle Europe. Um, uh, some for, for a few years, the incinerators complained about too few quantities and massive overcapacities in incineration. On the spot markets, it was traded on uh, very low costs. And in the last three years, the market has turned massively. The municipal waste from UK is uh, uh, flowing into Central and Northern Europe. This, is filled up, uh, this has filled up the free capacities and spot quantities are no longer assumed. And uh, if you don't have a long-term contract or have calculated with spot prices, you have a now big economic problem. But in the South, in the South, uh, there are countries that have not yet managed to create combustion capacities. Italian, Italy, even Slovenia, for example, exporting pre-treated waste to the North. And even with the Central Europe, there is an increasing waste volume exchange. Uh, today, classical incineration plants, waste to energy plants, cement plants are fully occupied. There are no more free capacities available. But beware, beware, Great Britain, many plants are under construction. They will start in some years. The waste flows from the island can dry up and how the Brexit will affect the material streams, nobody knows. Uh, another thing is uh, the big influence of China. Uh, China influences very much uh, the waste, international waste streams, uh, especially the West plastic waste, and up to 8 million tons of plastic was exported to China till 2017, but then the green fence policy was implemented, imports of plastic was reduced massively, and uh, large quantities of uh, plastic from Europe and USA ended up in China for recycling, not from Austria, I have to say, because our legislation provides this. And, uh, but the Chinese almost stopped importing plastic 2018 at the National SWOT program, where for it was the green fence. Um, and it's very interesting that the exports you can see in the chart to other countries then increased massively. In my opinion, some countries have failed to take responsibility of their waste and try to export the environmental problems. From my point, it's a scandal not to treat, uh, uh, take responsibility of their own waste uh, and uh, bring it just to somewhere. Uh, yeah, many countries were exporting their environmental problems to China or to other countries. And um, I think it's time for many countries to change the politics. And I'm convinced that uh, responsibility to recycle and solve our environmental problems, that this is our responsibility. Um, I would like to go to the collection of recycling schemes. Um, what are the principles? A recycling scheme is based uh, on regulation. Uh, they guarantee the customer the fulfillment of the recycling quota. Um, they take a license fee from the customer and the customer has to do nothing about uh, anymore. Um, they take the revenues from the secondary raw material. Uh, they make the data and information management and they often have no equipment, plants or trucks and um, the work is normally done by contractors. How does the recycling scheme work? Um, first, um, I have to show the, the, the municipality system, which is not a recycling system, uh, the recycling scheme. Um, we have the producer, we have the, uh, the, the, the trade, and we have the consumer, and the municipality is doing everything and the consumer is responsible. So the producer has no problem. Uh, he has sold his, his, his product and has no responsibility about it. That's the old, let's say, old situation. Um, the producer system, um, uh, it, the producer is responsible for return, for utilization, for recycling, for disposal of his products. 
uh, he must fulfill the legal recycling rate. He has to organize everything, but this is not possible for many projects that the producer can do this redistribution. Think of Red Bull, Red Bull cans. Uh, they can't organize collection from every consumer in a country. That's not possible. So we need uh, the recycling scheme. And now we have the recycling scheme or recycling system. Uh, it's all, it's the called so-called pool system. Uh, the collection, the recycling, the disposal is made by this pool, pool, by this scheme. The producer's duty is taken and fulfilled by the scheme. And um, um, the producer, as a producer, you make a contract with the scheme and you pay license fee. And you, are, uh, and you are now free from your due duties. The scheme fulfills the obligations of the law and the recycling targets and everything. A small example, the biggest recycling scheme in Austria is the ARA. It's not the only one, it was a monopole, but it isn't for some years now, uh, but it's the biggest one. And uh, just have a look at it. Um, uh, the ARA is a, a non-profit organization. Um, this must, but there are some other profit oriented systems too. This is not necessary. Uh, they have about 25,000 contractors in Austria uh, who are paying license fee. The ARA is organizing, collection, sorting, recycling, energetic utilization. Um, but they have no trucks, they have no containers of their own. They are like a financing and organizing fund. Um, um, they have built up, even for plastics, they have built up a system. It uh, consists of different collecting systems, but depending on waste producer requirements. Um, uh, I will come back to this a uh, little bit later. Um, the inf collecting infrastructure, they have set up uh, about 1.5 million containers in Austria and they are collecting about, let's say, 1 million tons of packaging waste in Austria. How is a scheme financed? On the one hand, uh, on the one hand you have the revenues from the socket or more raw material, it's about 25%, and the licensing fees, which is uh, the most of the money they earn, uh, the most uh, costs you have for collection and transport and for sorting, recovery, and uh, all other things are not so costly. Uh, one of the problems, uh, because some of the revenues is the raw material, is the raw material uh, uh, the system sells. Uh, this is just uh, uh, an old chart, but it shows the problem of the volatile raw material markets. Uh, this is uh, just the years before the economic crisis of 2008. The raw material prices were very high before and they fell down even into minus within weeks. And the volatile raw material market is one of the big challenges for a scheme because we have volatile uh, raw material markets. So some words about plastic collection. I will come back to uh, the light fraction collecting system in Austria. Let's go through this value chain. We have the collecting infrastructure, we have the collection, we have the transporting, the sorting, the recovery. Um, and uh, we have different collection systems um, based on, based on uh, the, uh, the place and pays based on the, on the producer. It's the uh, municipal collection with bags and, uh, and bins directly at the household. Um, but also uh, at uh, public places and for small uh, commercial uh, companies. Uh, it's collected with the same trucks in the same tour, it's transported, it's going to sorting plants. We have three big sorting plants in Austria. Um, then we have the recycling center collection uh, and we have the industry and commercial collection um, which is organized differently. Um, uh, the material goes to regional collecting centers from there uh, to the sorting plant. The sorting plant is, let's say, producing concentrates uh, and uh, the concentrates, special plastic types uh, pressed to bales are going to recycle, special recycling 
treatment plants or to waste or energy uh, plants. Um, normally they are energetic uh, 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 utilization is made by in the cement industry you are producing um, alternative fuels RDF out of the not possible recycling material. Uh, what I show you now these are the contracts the contracts for collection the contracts for uh, transporting the contracts for sorting and different contracts with each treatment or recycling plant. Um, now I will not tell you this. I will not tell you this. So at the end, at the end, I would like to uh, go to look at innovative innovative uh, developments. Um, it's mainly about digitalization of waste management. I was inspired some some charts from my colleague from Kerstin Kuchter from Hamburg. Um, you know, digitalization means changing business models by improving business processes based on the use of information and communication technologies. This is also the digitalization in waste management. Um, digitalization changes the direction of thinking. So the old business on the left side um, is thinking from the producer to the customer. And the new world thinking business is thinking from the customer who is measured and analyzed back to the industry. That's, I think, that's the main uh, difference in thinking. Um, in logistics, we need new hardware. Uh, what does this mean for a collecting truck? This means uh, telematic system, this means onboard units, this means special weighing systems, RFID identification systems, integration of cameras, and so on. Um, digital truck management systems new, uh, use a GPS route recording, route navigation systems, weighing systems, and every data is collected and shared with the network. Um, this enables us to optimize um, collection in regions by tour optimization software. You can see before it's maybe a little uh, confused, uh, little, uh, let's say, mixed tours. And after optimization, you have uh, optimized tours and lower transportation and logistic costs. Um, but we need technical hardware to connect containers, collection trucks, and management. One new um, development are so-called smart containers. They have sensors that give information about waste level, give order to empty and collect even other data of temperature or something else. And there is an interesting pilot project in Lower Austria to optimize glass collection by smart containers. And I think this is the future. So it's not defined, it defined tours, but it's tours on demand and on the level of full, um, uh, full containers. Um, intelligent containers will communicate with the smart trucks and the smart trucks uh, should know where they are collecting. Uh, they uh, should be uh, self should work with self self learning route planning, uh, traffic related route planning. Uh, it's also about uh, preventive maintain predictive maintenance, um, and uh, maybe in some years autonomous uh, collecting. But this is far in the future from my point. Um, a development I'm not convin convinced. Um, I'm not convinced of is the redistribution redistribution of waste by delivery systems. Today, 
uh, legal restrictions are preventing this widely and I don't think that all waste should be collected by sub 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 contractors of Amazon or Google. Uh, from my point we should avoid this development but sometime it could be an advantage. We've also kind of uberization of commercial waste starting. Uh, new platforms are developing collection of standard commercial waste. Uh, one example is the so-called waste box. If you are on the platform, you offer a waste collection contract for your waste and partners, companies can take up this contract to the best price. And um, this optimizes logistics and the platform is the provider and makes the money with the number of transactions. And today we are not able to decide if this business model will succeed, but we will see in the next years. Uh, there are some digital platforms, you know, the Waste Amazon business models for waste management. On the one hand, several solutions business to customer. It's, it's the classical digital selling. It's not so innovative. But on the other hand, we have the business to business uh, uh, systems, uh, digital platforms, uh, standardized business, franchise system is possible, apps for cons customers, and yeah, uh, the, the business model is uh, you make your money with the transaction fees. So it's not a regional uh, a business anymore, it's a international business, you can multiplicate it. Um, yeah. The last, uh, the last uh, um, I want to show is the so-called waste scan. The waste scan, uh, which, um, um, you know, 40% of the municipal solid waste, the grape in, are recyclables. They should not be in there. It's 30 to 50 kilograms per capita, capita a year. They should go to the separate collection, but they don't. And the idea is, or the technology is, that uh, if we unload the, the container into the collection uh, collection truck, uh, we have sensors and these sensors um, with near infrared and picture analysis working with artificial, artificial intelligence, they are, analyze the surface of the waste and they can tell you if uh, you are uh, 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 separating good or not so good and it's possible the information of separation quality is given back directly to the people by their mobile phone. So this system could maybe reduce uh, municipal solid waste uh, significantly. There are some pilots, uh, pilots in Austria in some regions and I'm very convinced that this is a quite intelligent uh, thing to do. Um, here you can see the picture, the picture which is uh, uh, analyzed by uh, artificial intelligence. Now, my conclusions. Some short words. Waste collection is the basis for waste treatment. What we don't collect, we can't recycle. That's one of the basic words. Separate collection is the basis for recycling. And the quality we collect is very necessary or it's, it's very important for recycling. The convenience motivates the people. So we have to make it simple. If it is too complicated, nobody will do it. And it, if even everybody knows and ev even everybody is motivated, 20% of all people will do nothing. That's one of our big problems. More and better collection, more and better recycling and waste treatment brings more environmental benefit. I didn't tell you much about this, but uh, uh, recycling is really a good um, advantage if you think of reducing climate gases, for example, or save energy and so on. There are many ideas and technical developments like digitalization, but it costs more money. That's the truth. Politicians don't want to hear this. But are we ready to spend more money on it? That's a question, that's a political question, that's a question of society. 
I want to close at the end with uh, some words of, the, of a great waste management philosopher. He asked one of the fundamental questions of waste management. It's Homer Simpson, who addresses an essential question in the waste management. Why always me to bring out the garbage? And really at the end, for everybody, everyone who thinks new ideas, it doesn't work. I would like to give you the words from Nelson Mandela. Everything is impossible until it's done. So thank you for my lecture. Thank you for your interest. Thank you. Thanks a lot for your great presentation, Professor. There are still a few minutes for questions from the audience, if there would be any questions. You could turn on your, uh, your microphone. No question. There is one question coming in the chat. Um, it's a question from LZ Motan. What could be a rec recommendation for an efficient sorting of plastic waste for mechanical versus chemical recycling? Mm -hmm. Good question. <laughs> um, I think uh, there will be, it, it doesn't matter how we, how we collect the material. We have, we, we will have, collected plastic waste that is so impure, so, uh, um, let's say, dirty, that it is not possible to go to uh, the classical recycling. Um, uh, so for this, for this material streams, I think we will need, we will need uh, chemical recycling to fulfill the targets. Um, but, Maybe if it is possible to to change um, to change uh, the product design so that the materials are better recyclable, higher recyclability, maybe um, uh, we can bring more to a, more to, to 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 classical recycling. But at the end, we will have uh, uh, material with impurities, with uh, dirt and surface. Uh, uh, and we will have, we will have um, a certain percentage with, with, which will be not uh, interesting, let's say, for the plastic recyclers, for the classic plastic recyclers. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking chemical recycling will be necessary. Thank you. There's another question from Inge Dams. Uh, you mentioned radius for market is only related to econ economics. Is there no legislation preventing the transportation of plastic waste across borders? Can plastic waste be freely transported? Um, yes. Not the input, not from collection, because then it's mixed waste and the regulations uh, 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 pro prohibit this. But if you have a, 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 a defined material, uh, the plastic material is traded over the whole world. Uh, you know, 8 million tons were going to China. Uh, now uh, millions of tons are going to other countries. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, I don't like this, I say, it's my personal opinion. But uh, if you have, a, um, let's say, a green list, green listed uh, waste, um, uh, so this is a, a waste of one type, for example, one type of plastic and uh, if it fulfills a uh, special, special quality, you can go over the borders. It's not the problem, it's just administration. It's a problem. You can't go over the, over the, over the, over the border with mixed material. This is not so easy. But if you have sorted material, you can go everywhere. It's like, like trading. Okay, thank you. The next question. Um, from Cleo, 
Um, it's maybe a short question, she says, about small, more private recyclers, uh, startups. For example, the Precious Plastic Network. Is there a future for these kinds of organizations? Uh, so these small, more private recyclers, more decentralized approaches. What is your opinion on that? I, I, I don't think that it is possible to answer this uh, for all cases. Um, it depends on, uh, on, you have to look at every startup, at every case, especially. But the main thing, it's, let's say, it's, not, it's not the question of technical feasibility. It's more the question of, uh, uh, of the business model, uh, how this fits to the legislation in your region. Okay, thank you. And then perhaps a last question. Um, Namarata wonders, how is this market radius? How is it calculated? It's very easy. Uh, you get some, I, I, will, I will tell you with, a, with, a, with, a, with an example. For example, if you have, um, you're collecting uh, demolition, construction and demolition waste. Yeah, it's a very, uh, because if a house is, 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 is uh, uh, you, you have to, uh, yeah, if construction demolition based, uh, the price for this material is 20 euro. No, yeah, 20 euro. Uh, so if you have, a, for example, if you have a, <coughs> a landfill for this mineral material, which is maybe very cheap, let's say five euro, you have 15 euro for, 15 euro for transporting. And with 15 euro, you can go approximately 20 kilometers. If you go far more, far away, you will earn no money. It's the opposite round. You will pay some money for it. That's very simple. Okay, thank you. There are a few more questions, but I will send them to your email you. uh, in the interest of time. Um, okay, then we will have a 10 minutes break. We'll start over at uh, half past three, and then we will move on to, uh, to a lecture, which is very suitable after this one, sorting and pretreatment by Professor De Meester of uh, Ghent University. See you in, uh, in 10 minutes. Thank you. 